Thank you so much to Squarespace for continuing to support my art channel. So, remember how in my last video, I just kept talking about the problems that I've been having lately? Well, I've managed to feel a lot better this week. And I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that I did that helped me get out of the rut that I was seemingly stuck in. Unfortunately, I'm still kind of sick. It's been this thing that's just been dragging forever. I don't really think that I'm sick anymore. I just have like these lingering symptoms. Just like this cough that's very slowly tapering away. And as you can probably hear, I'm still kind of congested. And the funny thing is that a lot of the... Uh, podcasts that I listen to myself I'm starting to notice are kind of congested as well so I guess there's just something going around and it's getting everyone but anyways I managed to put a stop to my horrible Tetris addiction that was taking over uh for some of some most of this month I guess um yeah it was kind of hard to kick and i did think about it at first a few times but i resisted the urge to reinstall it on my phone and yeah it's been uh, a lot better honestly like not doing that and watching a lot less reels just going on instagram less in general like for the past several days has really helped me clear my mind like it takes a little while to get back to normal but i feel way better about it now and um what else have been i've been reading quite a bit more which also helped me to just kind of get back into a more tranquil and not so distracted state so i've been way more successful with getting things done this week than i was last week for sure thankfully because it was really starting to drag but another thing that i did that actually really really helped me and this is something i noticed that tends to help me regardless of like what kind of situation i'm in like even if i'm just feeling down for no apparent reason it doesn't necessarily have to be like art block or um feeling unmotivated or whatever uh it really really helps me to type things out and just to talk myself through it because one thing i gotta say for sure i've noticed through so many years of trying to figure things out on my own like by that i mean i've i know a lot of people well maybe not a lot of people but some people go to see a therapist when they go through really hard times um when i went through some of the worst times like several years ago i did go talk to like a like a counselor or something not a counselor uh i don't even know what the word is but it's, it's not actually a therapist it's just something you can do um in canada i think you get like several sessions for free so the only reason why i did it is because it was free and i was like okay hey, whatever might as well just to take advantage of what i have available and that helped somewhat but it was kind of a short period of time and ever since then i never really did any sort of therapy and I do think therapy can be super helpful to people who struggle with like, I don't know, any sorts of emotional things. Um, but for the most part, I have done a lot of work to deal with my issues by myself, like just reading a lot about it, doing a lot of research, um, just trying different things here and there. And one thing that's maybe you have heard before that seems to be very, very true to me is that you really can't think something through properly by just thinking about it. It helps uh, a lot to talk to someone, which is why I was talking about therapy. Like when you actively talk to someone and if they're a good companion or like a person who knows what they're doing, they will ask you certain questions to help you figure things out on your own. And I think that's what a lot of good therapy comes down to. But if you don't have the means to get a therapist or like have someone to talk to i think it actually really really helps to just do it yourself uh while typing it out like to me that's been the most helpful thing i've ever done throughout my life like i used to kind of do this intuitively back in the day but it was more meandering and now that i understand better how to actually navigate my mind while i try to work through certain problems that i have uh i know how to approach like untangling 
the mess that is in my head by asking myself the right questions when I type things out. And I think one of the reasons why it's so helpful to type things out is because you get like a coherent train of thought that continues and doesn't get abruptly carried away by a stray thought which is what happens all the time when i try to think about something like i can sit around and think about uh what i'm feeling or how to like deal with it or what i can do but it's so easy to just think of something random in an instant and the train of thought gets completely interrupted and like that's why I think it's basically pointless to try to think about stuff in order to solve your problems. Um, and it's much better to just write them down. And <clears throat> so I wanted to tell you guys some of the stuff that I figured out while I've been just sorting out my brain. I have this, um, I usually do like my, my most used thing on my computer, I guess, for these purposes is uh, just notes like iCloud notes or whatever. Uh, I really like that because it's it's a pretty good organization system and um, yeah I've just been using that for years and the reason why I prefer that uh, instead of actually writing in a journal or something physically even though I like the aesthetics of that I like the idea of that analog and all that but honestly it's so much faster to type that I think it's completely redundant to try to do this in journaling format. Like, I've actually tried to uh, keep a journal before but as nice as it is to have it physically, it just took me forever to write one sentence. By the time I'm finished writing one sentence, I felt like I had to slow down my thinking by about 100 and I can't do that. It just, it, it's almost more derailing to try to write something with a pen than it is um, to think about it, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I digress. So before moving on, I'm just going to tell you real quick about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that is perfect for an independent artist like myself. I've been using Squarespace for a couple of years now, and it has been a very smooth experience throughout. And my Squarespace website serves as a portfolio and a main hub that pulls together all my social media pages and whatever other things I want to include, which is really easy to integrate into the website. Sometimes I wish I could have started using Squarespace earlier because it also has an integrated e-commerce feature as well as exclusive content members areas and my shop was unfortunately set up elsewhere prior but it would be really convenient to just have everything in the same place which is what Squarespace really exceeds at providing. The portfolio galleries I do use are very easy to manage and I can add and populate sub galleries in seconds whenever I want to add something new or change the entire look of my website whenever I want to update my branding. I highly recommend Squarespace if you don't have a portfolio website yet. So by visiting squarespace.com, you can get started and design an experiment with your own website free of charge. And once you're ready to make it public and launch, you can head over to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now back to the video. So the stuff that I was thinking about is how one of the main things that's been really difficult for me to deal with lately is to just set up the comic stuff. Like there are so many little things that need setting up, um, such as the scheduling, planning, and I tend to get very overwhelmed by considering too many aspects of one task at once. Like for instance, the task is to rele start releasing the comic. Like that sounds super simple, but then I get bogged down instantly when I start to think about just how much it actually takes to do something like that successfully. And one of the reasons why it's also been a lot harder for me to deal with than ever before um, is because last time I did it, I was much, much younger and I was basically in high school and I really didn't think anything through. Back then, because there were no stakes, there was just, it was just for fun. Everything was just for fun. I didn't think about anything at all. And I started this comic, it was like some sort of project for school or something. And then I was like, oh yeah, I should post this on DeviantArt. And then I just started posting one page at a time whenever I was working on it. And at first it was super fun. And because, because I didn't think about it at all and because I was working on it steadily for just a little while, it was super easy. But then when 
like a couple of months passed or whatnot and then i wanted to continue it outside the school project when it got a little bit more serious and i had to think about a story a bit more and plan ahead that's when things started like seriously falling apart for me and that's why this comic suffered through years of super inconsistent updates like medium changes stylistic changes it was just the biggest mess of all time uh, not to say that, you know, I hate it or anything, it was a good learning experience, but yeah, I really learned that as much as I want to just roll with the excitement and the enthusiasm that I sometimes have for a new project, that's not the right way to do it because if you fail to set things up properly, to set up systems for things to be working smoothly, um, it's very easy to burn out quickly and to just abandon. So that's definitely not a place where I want to find myself with this project, which is why I've been really a lot more careful with thinking things through. And it's, it's just a lot, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like figuring out every little thing, like figuring out how to make um how to make the project at least a little bit monetarily sustainable uh which to me at least for the first while would have to be largely based on patreon uh, i had to figure out a way to make patreon like a more enticing option for my readership for people who can and are willing to support and there are just so many little things that go into the decision making process like how many like how to offset the posting schedule and every time i post like i have to you know make sure that social media etc it's just a lot and i don't want to bore you with the details but for me stuff like this is it's exactly the kind of thing that burns me out it's because this is the type of planning that's super technical and it just i have to deal with crossover timelines of like posting schedules and whatnot and then I guess the thing that bogged me down the most this month was the website. I've been thinking about a lot, looking at a lot of webcomic websites, trying to figure out how I want to present the comic, whether I want it to be like one page at a time or like a scroll down situation. It's really difficult to make these decisions because I can see the pros and cons for all of them. And in the end, it's uh, it does have to kind of rely on what the best approach is for me specifically given like a variety of criteria one of which for me like right now is just the fact that i have to post one page at a time and that's the only way for me to make it work at the moment even though ideally i would of course love to uh, make much more substantial updates like several pages at a time and i've seen people do this somehow i have no idea how they can manage even with like very high quality art I'm hoping that someday I will be able to get there, but I'm just not there right now. And I am very upset with myself at the fact that I'm very much behind the schedule that I originally was expecting myself to be on like right now in March. And I know that a lot of this stems from me doing conventions somehow. I don't know what it is about conventions, but every time when I come back, it's I end up with so much downtime and just being totally depleted and i don't know what it is exactly that does this to me it's not even that i don't enjoy conventions but because i realized that it tend that tends to be the result almost every single time uh i just gotta take it easy and i haven't really planned to do that many more conventions this year at all i have applied to a couple and we'll see what happens like if i do get in i'll have to really weigh it out um but as it stands right now i'm trying to avoid that a little bit so that i can focus on things and maybe next year we'll see what happens anyways yeah so uh when i what was i talking about? let me just backtrack for a little bit yeah it was the setup the setup for uh the scheduling the the general overall setup for um, posting the comic publicly is what's been really getting me down because it's just been taking forever and I am like I want everything to be perfect I know that's you know obviously not uh, a reasonable expectation but I I really want the website to be nice like I don't want it to be some bare bones thing where you just click and then the pages is all you see with like a white background or something like I want it to look 
um, I want it to be an experience. I want uh, I want the readers to have like a specific experience when they go to the website, and I want the atmosphere to be present like right off the bat, and all those things. It takes so much thought and consideration and just like planning that yeah it at all it's been a lot but at least i managed to make a lot of progress on that front and i think at this point at least i narrowed down exactly what it is that i do want and now it's basically just execution time and i haven't exactly uh gotten the specifics for what kind of art assets i need to make for the websites but for the website but at least it's like it's getting there anyways so yeah i think like judging by my experience so far setting up the actual release is one of the hardest things i've had to deal with because i feel like i've been dealing with this for months and even though i have started posting the pages on patreon which was a huge thing off my chest at least they're happening sort of publicly i still need to remind myself that that's not really public in fact that's still very very private and the pages are still visible to a very very small number of people so uh just even realizing that alone makes me super anxious to start releasing them but you know the website's still in the works and for the most part i have to deal with most of this stuff by myself i have a little bit of help here and there but yeah it's just been rough like juggling all this stuff and just to circle back to some of the stuff that I had to work through this week in order to get myself back on track is uh, the first thing that crossed my mind is that I realized that for the longest time, actually, basically for the entire time up until very recently, I've been very, very dependent on outsourcing my motivation to like a third party let me explain so basically uh, i've noticed that the way i've been structuring my deadlines and like my productivity uh if i track it and kind of look at when i tend to be the most productive it does tend to happen when i have some sort of external uh deadline that is from some other project that i've committed to usually just some sort of like freelance on and off again thing that tends to come up randomly and that i tend to not say no to uh that's the kind of outside third party motivation that i'm talking about so what happens is my main motivation for these projects that i accept that are um or that I take on that are outside of myself, obviously, outside of my own projects. Uh, the main motivation, of course, is money, because most of the time, I'm, I'm my thinking is along the lines of, okay, if I do this project, then it's gonna, you know, replenish my bank account, and then I won't have to worry as much for X amount of time. But then I don't want to put my own projects on that much of a pause either. So I feel this burning desperation to finish uh, the freelance stuff as quickly as I can and to juggle it effectively with everything else that I have going on and I end up having these really big bursts of productivity where I get so much done in such a short amount of time that it's kind of amazing if I think about, about it now and then I notice that um, the longer this keeps going the more desperation I feel about the finish line of the freelance project and so I get there, I finally get to the finish line, I get paid, and, and then I find myself, I'm just like, finally, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. I'm done with the freelance project, and I just have all this time to myself, and I can just focus on my project. And then what happens is, I end up becoming like 10 times less productive, and I get very upset with myself very quickly, and it ends up dragging for like a few weeks, and then I start to think about like i start to wonder what happened and why am i so unproductive and like it's you know how many times this cycle has happened countless just countless times it's ridiculous it's basically how it is always and the thing that i've always attributed it to personally was that i must have just burnt myself out so like i overwork myself working on this freelance stuff like trying to get it done so quickly and then juggling it with my other previous um engagements that i am also 
uh, that I also had deadlines for. And then I feel like I just burnt myself out and I shouldn't do that. And then I, that's basically where that ends usually, my train of thought. And then I figure I just need some time to relax and recharge and then I'll be able to get back to it. The problem is that I do not ever have bursts of productivity like the ones that I do when I have to juggle freelance ever outside of that the only other thing that comes close to that is if I'm getting ready for some sort of convention and then I have a deadline to get a certain amount of things done before I have to go and because I know I kind of anticipate that I'm going to need some downtime afterwards and that's the closest other time that I can think of that's sort of like a burst of activity slash productivity but it's not even that sim similar I, I think it's it doesn't even come close to like the amount of productivity that I can do when I'm on a deadline from an external thing and then it finally occurred to me that it's not even burnout that I experience afterwards um, and burnout I don't think has really ever been a problem like the only times that I remember being actually burnt out was when I was working on Grimoire Noir. Like, that was different. Okay, that was, like, a totally different situation. But when it comes to these freelance projects that I did a lot of in the past, in, like, sp sporadically, um, I, I realized that I came to completely depend on external deadlines for my motivation. I realized that it isn't burnout that causes me to be unproductive. It's the fact that... I don't have an external deadline and I don't have like a specific person, um, a client that's depending on me to get something done on time. And I realized that my biggest motivation has always just been that. And the thing that really upsets me about this discovery is that unknowingly I have trained myself to outsource my motivation to like a third party. It's a really kind of annoying realization that I have because I mean honestly I don't know if I realized this earlier I don't know if, how much of a difference it would have even made but it appears that I completely depend on these external deadlines to make me feel motivation and as a result when I don't have these external deadlines the motivation just does not come like it's hard to explain because as many of you probably would know from personal experience if you're also artists trying to work on your own personal projects that uh, super um, electric excitement about a new project or a new idea is very short-lived like that stuff does not last very long i mean sometimes it comes back sporadically of course like for me it does all the time very randomly might i add <laughs> like in the middle of the night when i'm just thinking about stuff but it's the kind of motivation that you really can't rely on like it's impossible to rely on something that's completely unpredictable and most of the time making art is just discipline it just comes down to like 90 percent of it is discipline uh there's no like magical inspiration and you're not like some sort of I don't know who I'm talking to when I say this because most people I guess that I even closely know are artists so everybody that I know tends to understand this but like I think a lot of non-artists don't and they have this sort of idea that artists are these like magical weirdos that just are always inspired and are always like so creative and that always makes me laugh because that's not what it's like at all <laughs> it's, it's almost like a curse when you do get new new ideas which I do all the time it's more of a distraction than it is anything else like it's a hindrance because um yeah any new idea is just just dragging you away from your current commitment is what it does but anyways I digress so uh yeah this is a horrifying realization that I've trained myself to rely on external deadlines in order to be properly productive to my fullest capacity uh, yeah, it's very sad. I don't really know how to uh, deal with that exactly, but actually I will tell you how I realized this in the first place. So I'm sitting there drinking coffee in the morning the other day and I was just scrolling through Twitter, um, you know, just trying to 
catch up with what my friends have been up to mostly artist friends actually 100 percent artist friends anyways and then twitter is a little bit different from instagram so it's more like you get a mixed bag of stuff and i see quite a few people doing commissions on twitter for whatever reasons reason um i don't see this much in instagram but i digress so i saw that my friend has been doing commissions and she posted some um of her recent commission work and it got me thinking i'm just like hmm that was kind of fun i used to do commissions i used to do commissions pretty often this was a little while ago but uh i can still remember it pretty clearly and i was thinking about it and then i had a thought all of a sudden because i spent the past few weeks being so annoyingly like desperate to be productive but not being able to do it at all and i was thinking and also <laughs> i neglect to mention this but i don't exactly have money troubles or anything like that but i recently had to like pay taxes and stuff and just there's just been a ton of expenses recently that i didn't think about too much that have basically depleted the vast majority of my savings and that has made me very uncomfortable <laughs> because i spent a long time um well by long like i don't know the past five years like i was so scarred by being broke and like just being perpetually broke before that especially when i was working on grimoire noir as some of you might know it was like a very rough time for me because i was super underpaid for that project and just it was so difficult to be in that position to constantly be watching for what i'm spending or like just yeah it's i'm sure this is very understandable to most people but um yeah that sort of vulnerability too that comes with being broke or like being super like on the verge of being broke constantly um yeah that's a place where i don't ever want to find myself again and i worked really hard to uh <laughs> offset that and have some savings and have some security and some peace of mind and i've been doing very well with that for the past several years however because for the past year or so um, actually for the past couple of years, I've made some changes to the kind of work that I do and I've ended up putting more and more time into my personal project, my comic, more than anything else for the past year or so. Um, and obviously with that, my, the amount of freelance that I've been doing has su substantially decreased. And as a result, my savings weren't constantly getting um what's the topped up or whatever uh replenished as i will say um and and then like i had all these expenses and now i'm in a position where i'm like okay i actually don't even know how i'm gonna replenish these savings that are now gone and uh it's making me very nervous and that's kind of the point where I'm sitting there and looking at this Twitter and looking at my friend's posts about commissions. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe I should take some commissions. Why not? And then I go on this whole thing in my head where I'm like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta remember commissions were fun. I do like drawing other people, other people's characters. And then I remembered my own rant or rants many I've had, I'm sure, back in the day. Uh, when I rage quit commissions was one of the biggest things for me, one of the biggest reasons for me that I quit commissions is because it was a bad time investment. Like, I I concluded for myself that it was a bad time investment for me because if I actually put time into doing personal projects, like even, and by personal projects, I mean like when it comes to money specifically, let's say things like physical goods or like just like lifestyle items that i can sell in my shop that's a that's a good time investment because there is no cap on how much potential income things like that can generate so like if a product is nice and you know i i like to always make things that i personally like and that i would buy if i saw myself you never know how long that's gonna be like a popular product or even if it's not super popular still you there's no cap to how much potential income it can generate you get you get the idea so 
it, that I would consider a good time investment and not to mention that obviously I get to draw my characters and things that I choose and the aesthetics that I choose and more freedom etc blah 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 so that was like the biggest reason why I decided that commissions were just not a very good investment of my time because it was a one time payment situation and that was about it and the only other thing that i could potentially use commissions for in the future would be to pull together an art book or something like that or like an art collection but even then thinking about it i'm just like yeah that's nice but then it would not even be like my character so the copyright on that i mean obviously it's my own artwork so i would assume it's not really a problem but you can see how in terms of cultivating an image and wanting to be an original artist for the most part it doesn't really make much sense to have art books that are populated with fan art even though i do have a little bit of that in my art books for the most part it's all original work anyway that was like a long way of explaining why i stopped doing commissions in the first place so this is what I, this the, the point i was trying to make is that being in this state of like kind of sort of desperate um or like at least very mm, uncomfortable with the state of my bank account my mind instantly starts doing mental gymnastics um and like just digging up these old corpses that I thought I buried a long time ago, like commissions, you know what I mean? So suddenly thinking, and then my mental gymnastics was like, well, if I do commissions, then maybe I'll be able to pull together an art book faster. And then, thank God, I had the wherewithal for my, for more clear thinking to prevail. And I was thinking to myself, like, seriously? I can't believe I just thought about opening commissions again because I remember exactly how it goes every time I would open commissions. It's very similar to freelance, by the way, except it pays a lot less. But I open commissions and then I have maybe have fun doing like the first one, maybe the second one. And then it becomes this like rock on my back that I, this boulder, gigantic boulder that I have to carry. And then it becomes more and more difficult and then I start to put it off or I want to get it over and then like the desperation of trying to get those done but then also trying to work on other things at the same time basically I had to like you know figuratively slap myself out of that thought pattern and then sit down and actually like journal about this so this is when I realized that one of the biggest reasons why my mind actually darted towards commissions as a potential solution to my current woes is because it's it's like the whole outsourcing motivation problem all over again is because I wanted an external deadline like I wanted an external responsibility I wanted there to be a person a specific person or like a few specific people that I owe something to in order to feel the pressure to complete it and then I knew that if I have to do commissions I know I will hate it like I know that I will and hating it is what's gonna force me to do it faster and it's gonna force me to work on all my other stuff because then I'll feel this like resentment towards doing commissions and I'll be damned if I just focus on that so I gotta like figure out how to juggle and that's what I was really after was like that kind of you know I would say maybe even toxic motivation that I often utilize in order to have bursts of productivity so yeah that was how I realized that that's the trap that I've kind of put myself in and now that I know exactly what the trap was at least I can start to uh, maybe approach or like start testing ways to, I guess, fix it and get myself away from this habit that I have formed. So something that came to mind after I was thinking about this is just trying to remember like times in recent years when i felt more content with what i was doing and when i was happier with my output and my productivity and the thing that really jumped to my mind pretty instantly actually was the artwork that i produced for my sticker packs so 
if you guys are not familiar over the past like several years i did a few sticker packs uh, which were filled with traditional illustrations and they each had like a theme so the first one that i did was kind of experimental it was called the um, lilac forest pack and it was mostly uh, consistent of a bunch of artwork that I did for an Inktober that year, which is why it was all traditional. And um, I didn't start with anything in mind, like any sort of plan in mind. But when I was done with the Inktober, I decided to use that artwork to put together the uh, Lilac Forest sticker pack. And then I really liked it. I loved the way the stickers turned out. I really liked using them in my journals, uh, my like bullet journals. And and then I consciously set out to plan a few more sticker packs and I actually planned this whole series. And what I really loved about the series that I planned is that it was very tightly related with Gloaming Vale, like the story. Um, like the themes that I picked for each pack were correspondent with stuff in the story. And the whole thing was just very exciting to me. And so far, even though a bunch of years passed, I've been able to do two more of these packs. And thinking back on it, that was the most, those that artwork that I produced for these sticker packs uh, was the most enjoyable stuff that I did. Outside of the comic, like the actual comic and what I've been working on up until now, um, those were so fun for me to work on. And looking back also, I think that the videos that I made from the footage of working on the those illustrations was also much nice. Like I'm gonna be honest, okay? These this type of video here, um, I think it has value personally. Like I like these types of videos for when I work on my stuff. This is the kind of content that I personally really prefer. Um, on the one hand, right? But on the other hand, I also do like maybe for a different purpose. I love to see the process of artists actual finished illustrations and i have some friends that mostly have that type of content and sometimes i find myself thinking how i wish i had more of that these days and i feel like i really don't i feel like all i really have lately is just sketchbook sessions and warm-up sessions and for good reason because behind the scenes i've been working hard on the comic and as I hope some of you have seen by now, the level of finish on the comic is pretty high and it, it was very, it's very time consuming that process and it is very rewarding too because I put a lot of effort, but I digress. I find myself really missing traditional art lately. I realized that it's been a long time since I've actually made finished illustrations that are not just sketchbook pages. And I know that that's kind of like, uh, I, I tend to say stuff like this even though a lot of the times the quote-unquote just sketchbook pages that I had like several months ago I don't know maybe last year are actually just as finished as some of my quote-unquote finished illustrations but because they're in a sketchbook it's a little bit different like I don't know how to explain it but I I miss having like a stack of nice watercolor paper like finished illustration and that's the kind of stuff that I had and that's the stuff that I was left with after completing each one of those sticker packs and there is a reason why I stopped working on sticker packs and that was after careful consideration and me deciding that I need to strip away all the stuff that I feel like is extra in order for me to actually bring my full attention and my full focus towards the comic. But now I'm realizing that I think I'm the type of person that needs to juggle things. Like I think that it's very, very difficult for me to focus on one single project and only work on that, that being the comic at the moment. And even if I can't get it done as fast as i maybe would you know fantastically want to because of course i would love to do like 10 pages a week or something but that's totally unrealistic and i i really like to juggle projects and for that reason i've always loved going back and forth between digital art and traditional art and i think like basically the conclusion that i came came back to is that i really need to bring back working on these sticker um sticker pack projects of mine because 
they weren't just sticker packs like the sticker pack is the base i guess a uh, project that kind of dictates uh, what i'm going to draw based on the theme and the stuff that i want to put in those packs but a lot of like actually all the illustrations in those sticker packs were like finished polished illustrations so uh obviously i take the art in those things very seriously and for that reason it took me a long time to complete each one of them but i have actually noticed that those are very good products in my store because um and it so which makes me hopefully you know by hopefully i mean in a hopeful way believe that uh because i put so much effort into those sticker packs um people really like them and they continue to sell relatively well in my store and that brings me back to my like recent just sweating about money and whatnot i think that like i'm not in any dire position right now but i have to like i'm basically approaching the position where i seriously have to figure out how to replenish my savings um at least you know within the next couple of months or something uh which will ease my mind because i do get very paranoid about this kind of stuff because i hate the vulnerability that comes with um you know being like almost broke <laughs> anyways so i thought to myself and concluded that uh bringing back uh, a sticker um sticker pack project for me would be the best course of action because then i can clearly lay out a map of finished illustrations that i can hack away at and you know i know it takes some time and i know it's a lot of work but i think it would be really worthwhile because then next time i have a big store shop opening or like big shop update i will actually be really happy and really proud with the new collection that i'll put together from like the sticker pack theme which will obviously have a lot of finished bigger illustrations as well and just thinking about that makes me very happy because i still remember what it was like to release the other couple of packs that i did it was super exciting for me i was so proud still am. i'm really proud of those packs i really love using them myself i think they're nice products and i really like the washi tapes as well that i made out of some of the same artwork and i realized that i have a lot of weird um tendencies to like for instance one of the weird things that i have personally that's really annoying is i i for some reason i always feel like i can only use one artwork like once or twice by that i mean it's like okay so i have this illustration yeah i can put it into a sticker format and maybe i can make a print and then that's it and then for some reason like i put a limitation on myself when it comes to using my own artwork and in reality like i can actually use it for a lot more than just those two things like other st i can make other stationery and it, it doesn't have to be all new artwork all the time so that's one of that's another thing that i gotta you know figure out uh, anyways, they're kind of digressed there, but yeah, so that's, uh, the, the conclusion that I came to very recently that I want to proceed, and I've already picked the specific theme for this next sticker pack that I'm going to be working on, and yeah, it's going to be a slow project, I'm definitely not just going to, like, totally switch gears and jump to that, but at least thinking about that as the project that I want to juggle together with the comic makes me feel a lot better about, like, the next whatever however like the rest of the year actually because i think that's the best that i can do to give myself that external motivation like it's not actually external i have to learn how to motivate myself i have to learn how to be self-motivated and how to be productive and, and how to be very productive on my own terms i have to take this year to really teach myself that lesson because every time before i stepped into that pile of crap like of just becoming desperate and desperate at the same time for some sort of maybe external validation from a client and also external um deadlines and so that's what set me back so much over the past several years actually way more than that if i think about it but anyways it's good to finally kind of put my finger on what a lot of the issues were with my 
frequent bouts of like super low motivation and being unable to get things done and obviously like i know that this month i spend most of the month being sick i'm still kind of sick but uh i am getting better and i'm really hoping that maybe hopefully by next week i'll just be back to normal and now i have a very solid plan to make a bunch of new artwork hopefully make new watercolor slash ink pieces that i've really really missed at this point and yeah i feel really um motivated i do feel that motivation kind of coming back so hopefully this will help me and i'll obviously keep you guys updated i know this is like a much longer video than the previous one but i don't know i just felt really strongly about this topic like this whole um realization that i've been depending on something and i really kind of coached myself into this um unknowingly and it's i think it's gonna hopefully lead to kind of a breakthrough for me personally because i'm very very tired of constantly dealing with these um periods of what seems like burnout but like not really because there's really no reason for me to be burnt out so yeah i really hope that some of you guys maybe found this illuminating hopefully as illuminating as i did because it's like i knew that this was sort of a problem but i never could coherently verbalize it and i think some of the time actually most of the time even instinctively understanding something to be a problem is simply not enough what really makes the biggest difference for me as a person in order to um, facilitate any sort of big change in my life is to actually coherently verbalize the problem in a way that makes sense so yeah this hopefully this is what that was so yeah i um I uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. Hopefully this one was good company for you. I hope you managed to make some doodles or drawings in your sketchbooks. And yeah, just a quick note here. I ha What I was doing in this sketchbook session is like a Harry Potter themed um, life drawing session from Zed Studio. Um, I will leave a link in my description. I think they've moved from like, it used to be kind of difficult to use Zed because it was on some Chinese website, but now it's on Gumroad, much easier to navigate. And um, I'm not affiliated with them, but I will leave a uh, link in the description because this session was so fun. <laughs> there was actually one more thing that I wanted to talk about, but because this video is getting so ridiculously long, maybe I'll just leave that to the yeah. As you can see, sometimes I'm a huge chatterbox and um, yeah, hopefully you are happy with that because that's what you're gonna get out of this channel. So yeah, I will wait before I go. I have to mention the things. So yes, my comic is being posted on Patreon. Check that out if you want. Uh, the sticker packs that I mentioned are in my shop, which is also found in my description. Yes. And uh, it, I will honestly say that it does help me a lot if you subscribe and like my videos. I don't think I've ever said that in a video before actually, but yeah, I think it does actually help a lot because, and I, I'm doing myself a disservice by never really saying that out loud. So yeah, thank you so much for listening and I will see you in my next one. Bye.